Hi, everybody. Hello from uh, Canada, Seattle, Vancouver. Oh, my goodness. Everywhere. Happy Chinese New Year. My name is Zhang Mei. I'm the founder of Wild China and uh, wishing you all a great year of the ox. Uh, this is from my kitchen. And I have a friend of mine, who, Ye, Dr. Yewa, who is behind the screen. And she will join me to demonstrate how to make dumplings in a little bit. This is our 58th event since the exact same time a year ago. Um, and we've gone through so much staying at home. So no matter how much we stay at home, we have to make it fun, right? So today we are going to cook from the kitchen and let me share my PowerPoint and talk about a couple of things, um, how we're gonna go through this. Okay, bear with me. Today, because of the moving parts of technicality here, it's not the best setup here in the kitchen. I, I moved my entire office here. Just one second. Okay. All right. Bear with me, thank you. There it is. So today we're gonna go through three parts. The first part, let's prep the food a little bit because they need a little bit time to marinate and sit for a minute while it's sitting. And while some of you may be catching up, I will talk a little bit about Yunnan because dumpling making is only a part of our culture, but it's not the main part. I don't want to make everybody feel like this is the main thing of China everywhere. So I want to talk about a little bit diversity, right? And then the last bit, we'll cook and eat. Okay. I hope you all have gotten the recipe and I don't know, can I actually see in the chat section, how many will be cooking along with, so that I get a sense of the speed, the pace, how many, if you are cooking along, can you just type one, let, number one, and let me take a look. Oh, okay, quite a few of you are cooking along. Great, great. That's perfect. Then I will take the time to go slowly. Okay, we go through the first part. I'll stop the sharing and let's look at my other camera. The first thing you do, now it looks a little scary on this. Let me wash my hands. And I would advise you do the same. Hi, Yawa. <laughs> you want to come and join me? I think I'll, I'll do here, right? You'll do there. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is about a pound of meat thought out, right? And let's start salt. I put my salt and I generally use, I would say two teaspoons of it. Actually, my spoon is very small. So put a little bit, a one and a half teaspoon is probably good. If you're using a standard measuring spoon, you're going to see I don't cook exactly like a, uh, with a lot of precision. I cook more like my dad, who just tells me a pinch of this, a pinch of that. And so the exact measurement is in the recipe. But when I cook, you're going to see a lot of like some of this, some of that. Yeah. And I'll put a teaspoon of sugar in there just to add some flavoring. Now, a bit more of cooking oil. I use this. Can you see, actually, there are two screens. I'm using two screens. May, if, I've, I've spotlighted the one with the meat so everyone can see the meat one. Okay, they can see the meat one. Then you can see this is, I use grapeseed oil from Costco. Thank you, Kendra. I kind of go 
generously with oil. Then soy sauce. This is also from Costco, but I, gen I put it in a container so it's easy for me to pour. I would say about four swirls, maybe four tablespoons, roughly. So far, just salt, sugar, oil, and soy sauce. Yeah? Okay. And I put a little bit sesame oil. I would say half a teaspoon. That's pretty much it, except I think I put two eggs in there. Second. <laughs> okay, you are gonna join me in a second. No. Two eggs, I just break them straight into the, yeah. If my recipe said something slightly different, it's okay. They will taste roughly the same. All right, and the best thing to do because I just washed my hands and I've always cooked with my hands. So I just use my hands to mix it. This is probably the easiest smush it together. How are we doing so far? <laughs> okay. Linda, I can see Linda Austin from LA, Candace from LA. Hi guys, happy new year. Um, it's a little bit. Um, hey, May, we've got a couple questions here about the ginger. Okay, we'll, we'll put the ginger in a second. Yeah, ginger's coming next. All right, I can, s ginger we will dice. Okay, so this is the mix. And I'm gonna set this aside. Let me move my computer so it looks actually like a kitchen rather than my office. Okay. I wash my hand one more time. Besides ginger, hi, Gong Xi Fa Cai. Besides ginger, any other questions? Ginger's coming. I just like to wash my hands since I use my hands to mix. You can also use a spoon. But in China, a lot of things, Chinese kitchens, a lot of things are done with hands. It's easier to feel the texture. Now, chopping board. Okay. All right, how's everybody moving along in the process? Should I give you a minute? Or we can move along. All good. Hi, Rachel. Hi. It's good to see all these familiar names and, and new names, good friends and old friends. This is exactly like Chinese New Year. This is what I would do with friends. like my friend Yewa over there. Um, <laughs> okay, so ginger, the reason I wanted to slow down is because I wanted to demonstrate how we pe I peel this. I usually just scrape off the skin. Of course you can just use a peeler, except you lose a lot more. And in China, growing up with not much, and on the fridge is making noise. China, growing up in China without much um, food or um, everything was just tight. So I learned how to save every single bit. And this is what my dad would do. To so scrape it off, it's about an inch. All right, I moved it off the 
screen so that it's over it's over the sink. Last bit. Yep. Yeah. I want to have my counter for cutting. Okay. All right. We always use a big chopper. Let me see how you can see this is done. Cut it lengthwise. All right. Now it's gonna get a little bit noisy if I start to chop. I might mute myself for a second so that it's not too noisy. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> I unmuted myself. I don't know if there's a less messy way to chop, but I've always chopped it this way, so I, I guess I'm not going to change. Now, the reason this big knife is useful is it serves as a terrific spoon or ladle or whatever you call it, right? You can always scoop things up. And here's my meat. Add it in there. It, did, it doesn't matter if you stir it now or later. I just let it sit because now we're going to move on to the cabbage, the Napa cabbage. Okay, that's that. Are we all moving along all right? If anyone needs me to pause, we'll pause. Now, um, Napa. Actually, we have a couple questions here about if it would be okay to grate the ginger instead of chop it. Yes. Yes, any way you can, you can get it. Um, and like my children, actually, I think grating would be better for them because they hate it when they, what they call bits, when they bite into the dumpling and they say they are ginger bits. They want it to be finer, but when I'm short on time, I just do, 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 and do it really fast. But if you're grating, perfect. What are the other questions, Kendra? Uh, what about a food processor for the cabbage instead of chopping it? Uh, probably okay. Hey, yeah, but here there's water, huh? Uh, no, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, that's what I I I do actually. I ah. can use a food processor for a uh, cabbage. Okay. This is very easy. You just ah. Like, so. My friend Yewa, who because of COVID is sitting behind um, more than ten feet away from me, but she's telling me that's what she does food processor is much easier but i'm maybe old-fashioned and i've taught my son and it this is his task every time we do dumpling this is my son's task to chop the cabbage it's a terrific excuse to have him in the kitchen otherwise the 18 year old disappears on a screen and in his room i never get to see him so whatever excuse i have he is cooking in the kitchen with me so I've done most of it, actually, I go this way. This is rinsed, of course, ahead of time, right? Just Okay, I'm gonna mute with the thing.
Now I'm cheating a little bit because I have done more chopping ahead of time. All right? So see that? But I wanted to show how it's done. It's quite a bit. It's three cups minimum. Or you can do a little more, a little less. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I like to put as much as possible in it. Again, my son doesn't eat a lot of other vegetables. And this one is the least sort of, doesn't have a very strong flavor, but it gives the nutrition, fiber. And so whatever I can get away with, I put it in there. That's why I have so much. Now I'm rinsing off. And I'll give you all <laughs> do the same food process equally well yes i'm just reading the comments it's not cheating it's called well prepared thank you helen and uh i think cabbage is a stretcher for the precious meat yes very much so it also um traditionally does that I mean, nowadays actually because we have so much meat most families want to add cabbage so that you get a good dose of non-meat uh, nutrition, right? Okay, now I clean off my working counter. This is the part I always do, but I know my friend Yewa doesn't necessarily do it and my dad um, doesn't necessarily do it. I do it, what I mean is salt. I put a very generous, like two teaspoons, again, my spoon is tiny, okay? A little more um, of salt in there and shake it around. Let it sit for a few minutes and uh, then, the liquid will release. Now, why do I do that? One reason is without doing it later on when salt gets into the cabbage and you mix it into the filling, it becomes very liquidy, very soft, which makes it extremely difficult to wrap. So I do it to get rid of some of the liquid. Um, what are the other reasons? Yeah, why is there any other reason we would do it? I think that's the only reason. That's the only reason. Yeah. My dad doesn't like it because he thinks this takes away a lot of the nutrition from it. Okay. Yeah. Same with you? Okay. <laughs> My friend Yewa says the same thing. And we have some technical difficulties, so she's not on the screen and can't join me because of COVID. This is crazy. Um, okay. While some of you are catching up with the chopping, let me look at a couple of uh, comments here. Could you create ginger? That'd be fine. Uh, ah, so the amount of cabbage versus pork we just talked about. Right now, it looks like half-half. In my, in my case, sorry, let me move this. In my case, it's about half-half. Any other questions, Kendra? Um, doesn't look like it for now. How are we doing with the chopping? I should give people uh, a minute, yeah? And maybe I can go, uh, I don't want to keep, this is kind of tricky. This is difficult to um, know the pacing. Lynn, traditionally, is, and cabbage is uh, treasuring the food processor, makes it much smaller. I feel like I should add more. Feel free. I, I really think, yes, still chopping. Okay. Take your time. What I will do is while this is sitting, actually, we probably want to, I don't want to distract you. Otherwise, while chopping and I talk about, uh, I show PPT, you might chop the fingers. <laughs> so I don't think I want to distract you. I'll give you a second. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, are there more questions? No? Okay, I tried this recipe earlier and substituted chopped Brussels sprouts. Uh -huh. Because uh, you couldn't find Napa cabbage, okay. Good texture, flavor, and excellent point. And uh, no moisture, yes. Um, Brussels sprouts, I always find Brussels sprouts flavoring very similar to cabbage. You can probably use the other, I don't know what you call that, the big round yellow cabbage. Probably. In fact, in the north, yeah, well, what you use zucchini, right? Yes. Yeah, we use all kinds of vegetables, a zucchini and, uh, and sometimes actually green beans. Yeah, okay. Um, so zucchini, green chives. beans, and chives. Yeah, Chinese chives. That's, right. That's, uh, uh, yeah, something. Okay, yeah, hang on, let me see. So Chef Martin Yen's demo for Chinese New Year, he sells his uh, cleavers and said, if we ordered one, he would send the <laughs> metal protector with it. Um, no, here's the trick. I'll save you some money. You don't need a metal protector. The, the, the trick for using, by the way, this is my favorite, favorite, um, chopping cleaver let me show you is there a brand i can't quite see it's called dao d-a-o v-u-a dao Vu. i don't know how to pronounce it can you see dao Vu. this i think my friend um chef uh, the head chef at Chez Panisse, not Alice Waters, um, but Amy Denkler, she bought this for me from, I believe it's Market Hall in Oakland. And it, it feels great. The weight and the wooden handle does a really fine job. It gives me a very good hold on it. The key with chopping a chopper, is you hold the vegetable by, let me see how, if I find an angle you can see, curving your fingers tips in. So when you lift the knife, you don't lift a, a whole lot and you move along while holding the vegetable down without the knife ever having any danger of cutting your fingers. Of course, if you lift it really high, then you may lose the knuckles together. But that's a <laughs> that's a separate separate issue. Oh, it is on Amazon. Okay, yes, they're Vietnamese. Let's see. Try mixing zucchini, green beans, but but you would do zucchini and pork, green beans and pork. You do them separately. You don't mix zucchini and green beans, right, Yawa? Yeah, well. No, no. Yeah, you do them separately. All right. No, green beans, you have to, uh, how do you say, break them? You have to put them in the hot water. And what was that called? The chow you chow. Uh huh. Uh, you blanch. Yeah, blanch. Yeah. And then you uh, put in the cold water and then mm -hmm. you chop them. Right, one second. Okay, are we more or less okay? Have you salted the vegetable? Oh, there's Glenn. You talked about regional difference. Yes, we will get there. Some of the different things people eat. Right, in Yunnan, we mainly use two vegetables uh, with pork, right? We use cabbage and we use chive, green chive. I'll show you. Yeah, right. so this is So this is the green chive. You do the same thing. You chop it up and you mix in the pork separately. We always do one type of a vegetable or the other, but we don't usually do what um, in the West, sort of like chop soy 
a mixture of five, 10 different vegetables. That's not generally what we do at home. Okay. Now um, I will get to the PPT in a little bit. If you're done with the chopping and the salting of the, of the cabbage, we're gonna mix them now. Wash my hands one more time. Now, so, ah, I didn't put enough. See, you, can you see liquid that's building up at the bottom? <laughs> So I'm okay. It's a good half a cup of liquid left at the bottom. So as you could see, I was using quite a bit of force when I was squeezing the liquid out. And the more you get out of it, the more when you mix, it's less. May, we can't hear or see you on your other screen. I think we can hear you now, May. You can hear me now? We can hear you, but we can't see your face. We can see Yewa and we can see the bowl. Oh, now we can see you. Great. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, I need to give, give Yewa some light. Okay. I thank you, everybody. Please treat this as a family gathering, and you know what family gatherings are like. It's chaotic, and there are mistakes. I know this is not the most professional New Year's dinner. You can only see the bowl. Can you see me now? Um, I have okay. one spotlight, so that might be why. Okay, but if I speak, probably, 
<laughs> okay, I'm glad you're finding this still fun. All right, so um, this the filling is pretty much done, and now let's move to uh, Ye Wa. Can I move to you to start yeah, wrapping? Yeah, sure. I, I I don't have the wrap. I have it. Oh, okay. It's coming. Let me, I'll talk about this for a second and then I'll deliver it to you. So the bowl, I put it aside. I'm not sure what brand. Uh, you might want to paint this little, paint my uh, other camera. Yes, thank you, thank you. So this is what I usually get. If any of you are in Berkeley, this is widely available at Ranch 99 or Monterey Market. You can even find them in um, Berkeley Bowl. But Berkeley Bowls, I, I've, I've had a few that were moldy, so I don't buy them from there anymore. And you can easily buy a each time five packs, whatever, and freeze them. I usually keep them frozen until I need one and just bring it out in the morning. And this is the easiest to use. I know Ye Wa is the best. She's from the north, so she would usually never use this kind of stuff. She would hand roll all the dough. To me, a southerner, to ask me to hand roll a dough, th that would just stop me from making dumplings. So I thought easy, a shortcut is better. And there's one other thing. In the north, they say if you're dumpling wraps if you roll it and it's not round you cannot get married because no one will want you as a wife and that's why i married an american and so just i've never heard that no you you are muted yeah why you're still <laughs> that's that's what i was told <laughs> that's what i was told okay You have to unmute yourself so people can hear you. All right. So let's use that side. And I will give a few to Yewa. Okay. Um, I'm going to unmute you. Yeah. Hi, ma'am. We have a couple questions here. Yeah. Yes. That's That's, nice. yeah. yeah. Do, do you add soy sauce and cooking wine as well from Paula? Uh, sometimes, yes, but not necessary. The soy sauce, yes, I added four tablespoons, quite a bit. And cooking wine, this today I did not. Do you, Yewa? No, I never use cooking wine. Yeah, she doesn't put cooking wine. Yeah. So it doesn't, yeah, let's see. One more question from Zola, who is eight years old, and she wants to know how long it will take to cook the dumplings. Ah, we will get to that in a second as we boil the water. Okay. Usually it takes about eight minutes-ish. Let me see, so you can see my whole production there. You, you still have me pinned there. And Yewa, yeah, would you need chopsticks? Yeah. Uh, yes, and some... Some, ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Actually, one second. This is literally like cooking at home, you will see. I'm going to split some of the fillings to give to Yewa, who is the, my dear friend and dumpling expert. She's much more an expert, but I wanted you to, to cook the way the southerners cheat, um, the simpler way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, I will demonstrate my way of 
and then I, I want a different board. I bet Martin Yen does a much more professional job. Um, but here it's really at home. <laughs> okay, so you have a dry board. Yeah, flower. I believe Ye Wai is doing the same. If you can see her screen, you spread the flower on the board. This is pr to prevent it from sticking. And you leave the flower on the side. Later on, you may need it. Yeah. And you also take a little bowl not very big, it can be a saucer or whatever. And this is just cold water. You want to have the cold water right there. I use it to seal. Now we can get started. This is the same way I taught my 12 year old, 15 year old, 18 year old kids. So they all participate. Right now everyone's doing sports. So they will be hungry when they get home. Oh, you do that first. I'll do that. You do that later? Yeah. Okay. I, you, so you wet the border and it makes it easier to stick a chunk of the meat. Okay. Now this is the part that everyone has a way you can fold it. We're going to see Ye Wa folding it in a second, but I do it in a faster way. Oh. Squeezing it shut. Whoops, that's it busted open, but that's okay. So this is what you do. And your, um, can, can you see the other horizontal uh, screen? Yes, that has uh, Dr. Ye Waz. She does it slightly differently. Okay, let, let me show the way I... It, yes, yeah. it's showing you now. Okay. And so I'm going to go let... Put the feelings in and you first put the, you know, middle together. And then you go to the side. I go this way. And then I do the second. And then I do third. So make this a little, how do you say, a fold. And then you go this way. You use your left hand. And you do this way. The same. And then you squeeze. This is the jiaozi I made. Beautiful. But, but, but you know, it's in the, if you uh, hand make your wrap, it's much easier to uh, do the, you know, how you to wrap the, the jiaozi. So oh. Make a jiaozi. Right. Yeah. But this is a quite thin, this jiaozi piece. This wrap right. is quite thin, so you, you can't put too much feeling. Right. Uh, Richard said the pre-made wrappers are much tougher yeah. and less flexible and tend to break as it yeah. did in my demonstration. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Mine is uh, too uh, broken a little bit. So this is mine and you can keep at it. I don't think we're going to have time to get to my Yunnan PowerPoint. You are going to be busy making the dumplings. And can you perhaps stick the ah, stick two pre-made wrappers together? N not recommended. The reason being uh, you don't have the right shape. And to make, make dumplings, Again, another way to measure whether this woman is marriable or not is whether your dumpling is sitting up and not lying down. Sometimes 
<laughs> if you are just starting out and making, so if it's too flat, you put two together, you're going to have a very funny shape like this, then it has to be lying down. And that somehow aesthetically doesn't quite look like jiaozi, even though the content is exactly the same, right? Um, <laughs> this is kind of fun. Okay, I'm doing it in a faster way. I've never heard of that. Hey. Oh, cool. Yewa says she's never heard of all these sayings about whether people, these, these women are marriable or not. That must be a psychological sort of uh, threat that my family was giving me, forcing me to learn all this stuff. Yeah, in those words, they say, <laughs> she if, said, if you have your, your, your feet is too, your foot is too, uh, your feet is too big. You're unable to get married. Okay, so in the north, um, Ye was from Beijing. I'm from Yunnan. And uh, she's saying in the north, um, the only thing that really matters are your feet, the size of your, feet. Size of your feet. If your feet are too big, no one will marry you. That's why people bound their feet. Uh, and for the eight-year-old audience, that is old China. That's like 100 years ago. Nada, we don't do that anymore. And we can wear normal shoes. And actually Chinese women love high heels too. Um, so size 10. <laughs> <laughs> size 10 in China. If you have size like 12 in China, you'll have difficulty finding shoes. <laughs> but but uh, nowadays any size goes. Okay, fortunately, you don't have to live in China ancient times. Exactly. Okay, could you please fold the dumplings again? Let's paint to Ye Wa's folding. Hers um, is meticulous and absolutely beautiful. Not really. And it's just this way. Yeah. While she is wrapping hers, it's just your, the, the, yeah, the, the, this writing is just not very easy to uh, stick together, I guess. See, uh, it's sitting right there. We have a question for either one of you about how to make vegetarian dumplings. What would you use instead of pork? Okay, so vegetarian dumpling, I make one. It's jiu cai ji dan. It's chives, like this chive that I was showing earlier the green chive, it's, it's garlic chive, if you're looking for it. it. My husband, we've been married for 21 years and he still doesn't quite know the difference of this chive and the normal Western chive. The Western chive, we don't use that for, for cooking Chinese food. And this is very garlicky. And you, you chop these finely or in the food processor, I would guess. And with eggs, but you pre-cook the eggs separately. You would take all your eggs and beat it up in the bowl, uh, sort of like a scrambled egg, but you scramble it a little bit harder. You, you cook a little bit, a little bit harder, and chop that up after it's cooked, scrambled. You chop that up into little bits as well, and mix eggs and chives together with salt soy sauce and uh, a little bit uh, sesame oil, like what we did earlier. And that's your filling. No ginger. Oh, and uh, no ginger, yes. Uh, and oil as well. You will need the oil to stick it together. You can also replace the um, uh, eggs with tofu. Yeah. Right. I would buy, what would you say, Yeah, why you would use hard tofu or medium? Four. Firm. Oh, firm, firm tofu, and you use your hands like what I was doing with the meat and, you know, smush it up together with the chive and use the same seasoning. You have a perfectly tasty vegetarian version. Okay, here's another question. Close up, close up. Okay, okay. Um, is this close enough to, you can see Yawas, right? Can you see mine? Yeah, I think it looks beautiful. Um, this is going to make a lot of dumplings. Yes. How do we best deal with the extras? Excellent question. So usually you, you finish all the dumpling wraps in 
in one go. The filling, the recipe I gave you easily uses up one, one packet of these wrappings. And as you are cooking, actually, as you are making, normally I would use a piece of, um, a piece of paper towel, wet it, and wring the water out and put that around your uh, dumpling wraps. This way they don't get dry. I don't, do you do that, Yawa? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you see? And so I would, as I was cooking, if I'm like taking a second uh, doing anything else, this is how you want to keep it while you are cooking. So it keeps the moisture in the wraps. Now you finish, if you don't finish all the wraps, you put that in a little Ziploc bag or container and freeze it. You can use it next time. And normally the fillings, what I do with the fillings, because cabbage, I don't think cabbage freezes very well. And I don't like it very much. When you thaw it, it becomes very, a lot, lots of liquid gets released again. So I generally put the leftover in one of the um, uh, little containers, just put it in the fridge. And I would use it the next day for making my noodles, for making my rice, heating up for lunch. And what you do is you don't need to put any additional seasoning. You have, say, you know, uh, two tablespoons of the filling or half a cup, a cup of fillings left. You put probably equivalent of the a quarter cup, less than the two tablespoons of oil in the frying pan and put in all the fillings in there and just cook it. Then you can put rice on top, put some chicken stock on top, put a little bit green vegetable. You have this beautiful sort of leftover casserole, but no one would know because it's so tasty. Um, that's what I do with the leftovers. Or the next day you can continue to um, make more dumplings. But usually I would only use it the next day if I don't freeze it. Does that help? Well, not. Uh, question. I've been making dumplings for 50 years and just the last few days actually learned how to actually beautifully fold the dumplings. Uh, number, yes, a number of uh, lots of videos on YouTube. Um, okay, could you please? All right. I'd better get to the boiling part. We have 10 minutes. Okay, the, the, this is when you want to do. We'll probably take stretch out a little bit. And if you need to go and you want to eat your dumplings um, later, uh, feel free. But what I'm going to move my this camera here. You with me? Host has spotlighted. Okay. All right. This part, I put about, I would say, two and a half inches of water. I should have done this a little earlier. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay. Close the lid, bring it to boil. We'll just let it boil for a second. Whoop, sorry, I'm making you dizzy. All right, it looks a little messy. How are we doing with your wrapping? Let's see, two new, well, my dumplings are always used um, Algae wrappers and fried. Ah, okay. I can talk about the. Now we're talking about the cooking part. Actually, Kendra, I think you can focus the the. Yeah, wow. Exactly. Hers is just so much more aesthetically appealing. So look at hers. <laughs> um, <laughs> mine is a bit of a mess. So. But, but while she's cooking, I will talk about um, cooking 
uh, the dumplings. There are generally two ways uh, you would do this. One is what we just did, boiling, that's the fastest. And I usually, after the dump, oh, by the way, after the dumpling is made, if you're not having them today, freeze them, F freeze the dumpling together with the skin uh, already wrapped in the freezer. And you want to, once it's frozen, you want to put it in a plastic bag, a Ziploc bag, so that the, it doesn't continue to, um, here. Do you want these two? Yeah, sure. I am completely putting you on to make all the dumplings for tonight's dinner. Um, and, um, uh, yes, so you, you want to put it in the Ziploc bag and not openly uh, on the tray in the freezer because that will dry the dumplings up. So you want to zip them in a, a sealed container. And if they are frozen, the best thing to do is to boil. Right? And when you are boiling, you boil the water, you bring it to boil, it takes probably eight to 10 minutes. And once it's boiling, you put dumplings in pieces at a time, not a whole bunch of throwing. You want to put them in gradually, stir with a spatula, which you're going to see in a little bit. This way you keep them separated one from the other and also separated from the bottom. You don't want them to sink to the bottom and get burned at the bottom. You want them to be floating in the water and you bring that to boil again. And the way to not to let it boil too hard, you, we don't adjust the heat the heat, the fire, you just keep, keep it burning hot. But you adjust the temperature by adding a cup of cold water once it comes back to boil again. And you add cold water two times um, for these fresh ones. They're good. For frozen ones, Oh, May, we lost your audio. Uh, yes. But it's a little bit further, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little quiet, but we can hear you. Okay, then I will shout. <laughs> um, so so you, you, that's boiling. Then the second way of cooking is you put in a big steamer. There are uh, different steamers you can buy in the Chinese shop. I'll show you the one I have. If you want to show my screen, Kendra, that that would be fine too. So this is a big steamer. It's a huge pot, and normally I store the lid with it. And you fill the bottom with water. You um, put this on top. Again, so at this stage, you do not want to put dumplings on yet. Instead. You want to do exactly what I did with the wet paper towel. You want to lay two pieces of wet paper towel. I mean, just one layer. Uh, mine is a small pie. So you, you wet it and lay it out. And, or you use cheesecloth. That's the best. So you don't have to throw it out. And you just wash it and reuse it. But make sure you wet it beforehand and put it here. And then you lay the dumplings one at a time on the steamer. And you can steam that. Now this kind of cooking, the dumplings come out a little bit uh, tougher than, uh, than the boiled ones. My kids don't like them steamed like this very much. Do you do that, Yoa? No, I also do in a, a portier pot steaker. But you boil that first, right? No, 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 pot steaker you can just put in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the frying pan mm -hmm. and then you add water. So, right. Ah. Yeah, and then you just uh, cover it with the lid and uh, oh, you put oil first and then, you know, you put your uh, uh, dumplings on the frying pan and you add water yeah. and then you cover it with a uh, lid. Okay. And when the uh, water boil, boiled out, out, 
and yeah. uh, you know the bottom of the uh, dumpling kind of a fried uh, I would say ground yes yes and then that's done okay yeah. yeah which we can I do can a bunch show you how to do we, that. we can do that in a second so while we are waiting for the water to boil so, so yeah well, i just shared the third way of cooking right the third mm -hmm. way is use directly cook as pot sticker and we will see how that is done in a little bit yeah well, we'll do that uh, and you, you have a flat frying pan right? i do i do okay. yeah yeah okay uh -huh. Now, what I want to move along, I think the audio cut out. Is it cut out again or it's? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. okay, it's okay. All right, that was an older message. While um, Yewa is still making more dumplings or any of you are making more dumplings waiting for the water to boil, I want to show you what I do with the dipping sauce. Uh-oh, is it out again? Um, yeah, your main camera is out, but we could. Still, okay. We can still hear you. Okay, you can hear me, and I'm gonna show you what you. Let's see, this one. I think that will come back. All right, not the best camera angle, but you can see what I would do. This is the dipping sauce that my kids generally like, and you can use this dipping sauce for pretty much universally anything you want. Um, what I mean is if you have boiled daikon, if you have steamed mantel, those kind of buns, you want to have um, add a little more flavor and this is what you do. Okay. All right. I do, I put three different kinds of greens. Now I have two there. One is cilantro, the other one is chai, the third one that is coming is green onion. And in California, we are so lucky, you can basically keep these um, herbs in a little pot anywhere that's sunny and um, go fetch them whenever you want. I have them on my deck. Okay. All right. Oh, hang on. Dumplings boiling. Shall we put a few in? How are we doing on the other side? Are you boiling your water? Uh, okay. Let me just finish this and we'll let it boil for a second. Is cilantro compulsory? No. Not at all. It's, it's up to your flavor. In, in fact, my son it doesn't like any of these herbs. So he would only use vinegar and soy sauce. Those are the only two things. He pours them onto his dumplings. That's how he eats. Um, but I generally like all three. Like I mentioned, curl up your fingers. In North China, they use garlic. Ah, in Northern China, they use garlic. Yeah, raw garlic. Raw garlic. You, you sort of smash them, yeah, chop yeah, them up, right? Them. Yeah. Um, right, this is very southern. And... Here we go. Okay, that's the seasoning, uh, I mean herbs. Then I put soy and vinegar half-half. Vinegar is this. Zhenjiang Xiangsu, you find it any Ranch 99, or you can order it online. 
um, it's widely available. But my kids are very specific, very particular. When they eat dumplings, they only want Chinese vinegar. When I give them balsamic vinegars or any other red wine vinegars to replace, uh -uh, it does not work. So if we travel, <laughs> <laughs> they are... Um, Okay, so half, half, and once again, sesame oil, very light, go on these, just a couple of drops. Okay, and now I'm running low on this. Okay. Are we done? Are we done? Uh, this, I need another board. Well, to check this out. Do you want me? Check this out. The other Anyone side. want a screenshot? The other Have, side. Which other side? This, this back. Oh, you okay. Can see the fold. See? Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> Sorry, I should be wearing a mask. No, no, no. Okay. But you oh, have that seen already, me? so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to make the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, pop sticker, so yes. you don't you don't fold the other side, so it's very easy. I oh really? Yeah. Do we have more? I can make some. You give me a board. Give me a board. If you grab a board from up there, or I'll actually take this board. Uh, you want to take this board? Yeah, yeah. Um, bigger one. Okay. You're finished. Huh? I'm finished when I'm done. So the last thing I put in the sauce, lagama, every Chinese person knows this. This is, again, a shortcut. My aunt would mix these kind of sauce herself and they taste better than lagama. I should call her brand my aunt um, and start marketing those. I like putting, okay, I like putting a little more in one a little less in the other. And I gradually up the dosage of these chili in my mixings so that I train my girls to gradually get used to it. Uh, and they don't know, but this is a subtle process of teaching them what Yunnan food is about. We use a lot of chili, but my kids don't like chili, so I have to gradually train. And I do this in a sneaky way so they don't know. Okay. Sorry, they're gonna get dizzy. But now let's see. Did you see that? I'm boiling. I'm going to uh, there. They go in. Uh, Okay. Can you see? There. Okay. Um, Kendra, maybe you can move to focus on Yewa for a second. I'll fix this camera so people don't get dizzy. Yeah. Okay, I'm making a hot speaker, so this is much easier because you don't uh, close the end, so you just put, you know, uh, stick the middle together when you wrap it, so it looks like this. So I'll, I'll show you how to cook it. It's, it's much easier this way to uh, make a hot sticker because you, when you cook, you want the juice from the uh, feedings, uh, you know, out to the pans. So to make the uh, pot sticker more flavory. So just do this. Yeah, it's very simple, see? 
Oh. Yeah. I you know, never this did is this. A, this is like a, a how do you say? Uh, it's not, it's, I don't know. Some, you see, it's very quick. And actually this wrapping, I think is, <laughs> is for gyoza, it's sort of like, you know, pasta here. And then, uh, yeah. I love that, that's much easier. Yeah, very easy. Yeah, we gotta cook that. Yeah, and uh, you just, I'll show how, to, how okay. you cook it. Yeah, okay, yeah. people are eager to see how we cook it. Yeah. Oh, Shall Rachel Decker is already eating yours. Excellent. Um, yes, I know we've gone past the time. Um, for all of you who join us today, thank you so much. We have, I believe next Thursday, a book talk with William Lindsay about uh, his book called 50 Objects About the Great Wall, which is gonna be a great read. And he is the most knowledgeable person I know on earth uh, when, when it comes to the Great Wall. So come and join us. And also, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, also, this time, this December, 2021, if we get COVID out of, under control, I plan to go back and travel back to Yunnan and uh, visit all the folks who worked with me to, uh, to make my ham book coming true. It's called My Ham uh, Eating Trip to Yunnan. And that is on Wild China website. You can look up for that. For those of you who have time to stay on, Ye Wa and I will continue for the next 20 minutes or so to just cook the pot stickers and um, eat everything. Thank you so much and have a lovely new year wonderful year of the ox and in Chinese so everyone's saying the ox is going to kick the virus from the earth so it's a powerful kick and happy new year everybody for those of you who have to leave take care thank you for joining us and then the rest of us we stay on and continue cooking okay uh, I used all the wrapping oh wow she yeah. used all the wrappings okay let me see if I can with a little more. I have a few more actually. You can uh, continue the whatever. The... <laughs> 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 uh, thank you for indulging us. Um, people actually find this fun. Uh, this is just how we celebrate Chinese New Year anyway at home. So I hope you find this just giving you a sense of what it is like actually having Chinese New Year and um, oh, you know, you can, you can come about. Great, I need to check yeah. my, <laughs> my, my thing. Oh my god, look at that. Okay, I should have added some uh, okay. cold water. This is boiling way too vigorously. There. Can you see? Kendra, are you staying on? Yeah, sorry, I was just slow to move the spotlight. It should be good now. Yeah, okay. I just uh, added a full cup of hot of cold water in there. And I think it should Look how beautiful they are. Because I let it cook for a little bit, I think very soon this will be done. Yeah, well, let's um, get the pot sticker going. Okay. Uh, you give me a ping pool. Yeah. Uh, just buying <clears throat> So, here's the frying pan. Can you see? And some oil? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this way you can see it. And we set that up. Okay, it's ah, very easy. Oil? Yeah, oil. Okay, I think this is done. You, you pull that up. 
？啊、呃，没有这个活动，但是哦，对对，希望你们的这个节日做活动。我可以用别的活动。哦哦，对对对，就是。OK， 我们这个这个就是特别简单，因为你这个不要那个，不要两次。If you speak English, then I don't have to translate. Oh, 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 okay. So this way, you make this a、uh, pause sticker. It's very easy because you don't have to close the ends, and then you just add oil and put them here. And、uh, this way.、Oh. This is beautiful. Okay, my my、uh, dumpling is done. Okay. It's actually all yours. <laughs> well, I think I put a little bit too much. Ah.、Uh -huh. And the water. Water. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. I will move this around a little. And sure. Yeah. And then I'm on this one. Oh, oh, okay. And then you just add water. How much? Is I don't know. It's about、uh, no, 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 not a quarter cup. Maybe uh two, two uh two or three tablespoons. I guess not a quarter cup. That looks quite a bit. Okay. okay. Oh, maybe a quarter.、Uh, and I need a a lid. A lid. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Put the cover. Oh, it's not. Hey, hey, hey! Wait, not yet. Yeah. It's not right. Okay. Oh, this is beautiful. Beautiful shade. <laughs> yes. Who's gonna eat it? You. <laughs> <laughs> there, isn't this beautiful steaming dumplings?、Uh, now I put a mask on, and it's time to eat. Okay, I'll try one. Okay, and you get to try one too. Okay. I think I put a little bit too much water. That's okay. Now put now the the camera angle and the light doesn't it's too bright. I think you should try it. Okay, you can get a plate. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Anybody else? Let me see. Hmm. Excellent. Good. You put some a little bit of green onions. I did. Oh, oh, oh. No, I mean in the. Hmm. Yeah, I was saying. She likes to put green onions in her fillings. I don't. I find it. I find the flavor too strong. Okay. This is like live streaming rather than. <laughs> here. Here, Yamani, come try one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, try it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. We didn't look at the time. How long is that going to take? You know, one uh, red and pink color. Chango. <laughs> now you get to actually <laughs> meet, meet my beautiful <laughs> yellow hamper <laughs> without her mask on. Okay. <laughs> Your iPad is full of pork. I am so sorry. I, my office, my, my mouse, everything is full of flour. Eating. Excellent. Delicious. Happy New Year. <laughs> you want to eat uh, yeah, well, house. Not only is food great, the wine is great, the conversation is great. Uh, it's actually fantastic. Except we are going to be eating outdoors in a little bit. We can practice social distancing yeah. a bit. All right, and let's see, there are some Q&A. How long will it take to cook? Yeah, so long. Okay, how do you offer the recipe? Oh, we did that. Use that, we did that. Thank you, that's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's really wonderful, that's really wonderful. <laughs> That's really great. You know, another evening, this, this was um, Chinese New Year, so we focused on dumpling, but in my daily routine for preparing dinners for my kids, I whip everything together. I usually finish my calls or whatever with Beijing at 6 p.m. and hit the kitchen. No, usually I would hit the kitchen at 6.30 and we'd be eating by 7.15. Um, that's cooking Chinese meal. Stir fry was my simplest thing, but my kids said that they don't want stir fry anymore. It's, it's too much, it's the same thing all the time. From time to time, we do beef stew or uh, three cup chicken from Taiwan recipe that I learned from Yawa. And also, what are the others? Ah, tomorrow I'm going to do uh, steam a beautiful pork shank for friends. And that process is complicated. But what I'm saying is, if this is of interest, let us know or follow us on Instagram. And Kendra, we can talk, we can see more events like this. Maybe just do a simple stir fries or uh, focus on non meat vegetarian dishes. My One of my kids is um, vegan or chicken, chicken pescatarian. So we do do a lot with tofu, with beans. Um, in fact, I have some dishes on um, beans cooking in the French pot over there. Um, so, okay. that's so Mookie. Good. You see? You want to say hi, Mookie? Say hi. Hey, wait. Mookie, it's time to say hi. Okay, fine. Prettier over there. It's it's incredibly beautiful. Yeah, it's and the same same dressing. Yeah, the ca camera is not doing it justice. Now I'm good. I, <laughs> have to, I have to try one of these. But you have to eat hot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad for the kids who are still at soccer or tennis or. Oh. Whatever. So I called Joe to come six thirty. Is that too early? 
You can have one. <laughs> have one. You have to have okay, one. Okay, I'll have one. Do you want to uh, mm. finish making the this good? Okay, my vote. Hot sticker is better because it has oil, <laughs> and also Yewa cooked it. Um, <laughs> I think this is great. See, you add to your uh, what your um, uh, uh, inventory. <laughs> this is really good. Mm. Mm. Once my kids have this, mm. they will never have want to have mm. that anymore. But that's very easy to cook. You know, you can just, uh, you, it's much easier than jobs, mm -hmm. right? Than dumpling. Mm -hmm. So. Ah. This is what Xiao Gong Ye Xiang Shi Xiao Gong Ye Xiang Shi Xiao Zi. You are absolutely right, Helen. So, oh no, he just, he sat down and he's in this like, can I have some sort of position? But we can't give it to him. Look at him, look at him, he's following us. Um, but what, um, I was just saying like, yeah, was presentation. This is important because normally I thought I would flip it over and cook it around the other side, but you don't. You just serve yeah. it upside down. Yeah, but you have to add water, mm -hmm. you know, so, so they basically steam. Yes. The upper part, but the lower part is sort of like the fried. Fried. Yeah. yeah. Fried. This, this is really good. Yeah. And I was asking you if I could talk about it. Her yeah. aunt yeah. is Cecilia She's... Chang, who unfortunately just passed, left us, passed away a few months ago, yeah. like a month or two ago. And she ran the most sort of upscale, famous Chinese restaurant, which brought Chinese food from a sort of cheap takeout branding to a oh, elegant sort of social gathering sort of positioning, right? And yeah. presentation is definitely one of Cecilia's strengths, right? She, my <laughs> presentation is never right. Well, you, maybe you don't yeah, pass yeah, yeah, Cecilia's yeah. requirements. Right. But she, usually she, she will have this kind of elongate place. Uh -huh. Put this along, uh -huh. put this, you know, on the place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. she'll put some kind of uh, garnish, some xiang cai, some yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever. So, so we can you, you can use all the creativity, garnish it, and they will yeah. think this is the world's most beautiful dish. That's the next course we will. Yeah. Have. So this is has to be exactly. <laughs> No, she's being exacting. <laughs> oh, uh, someone's, um, Josephine said the grandchildren love jiaozi and they were born in Beijing. Yeah, yeah, make jiaozi for your family. This, this is the one dish that if I can make it every day, I know my son will eat it every day. And he's going off to college this September and he asked me if I could mail him. <laughs> and I said, instead of me mailing them, what I'll do is I will teach you. So rather than giving you fish, I'm going to teach, teach you how to fish. And he now can actually execute all of this. But this, this pot sticker thing is something he has to learn. Oh, yeah. The, this I is a, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, if, yeah. If he knows how to make jobs and dunking, this is much more easier. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, 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 really. It's, you saw me how to fold this. You just with the opening, yeah. 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 Two ends opening, just uh, sort of like yeah. Uh, stick the middle together. Uh -huh. Used last wrapper. Oh, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> uh, yes, someone's saying you're wearing this beautiful black outfit, and there's no flower stuck to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the skill. You have the mascot. <laughs> you have the mascot. <laughs> but this is actually not black, but it looks like black. It's it a is. kind of a dark green. Dark, 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 dark blue. Dark blue. Dark blue. She had this made um, in Beijing yeah. by a tailor. It's all yeah. wool. It's absolutely beautiful Chinese yeah. outfit. Um, 
there are just so much to discover in China, right? We have yeah. to go back. When yeah. time is over, we have to go back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I think yeah. we yeah. probably will say goodbye for now yeah. for today. Um, they yes, they look. So they had a YouTube show as <laughs> exhibition. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, have a wonderful evening. This is the first day of the year of Ox, and um, I hope. Every single day you have from here on is filled with fun, laughter, friendship, and good food. Um, Happy New Year. Take care. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. <laughs>